The swing among consumers from spenders to savers is just one of a host of challenges facing retailers. I spoke to James Stewart, a retail specialist and partner in the big consultancy and insolvency firm, Ferrier Hodgson. Well, James, is there much data about what's actually going on in online retailing? There is a lot of data, Alan, uh, and a lot of data that is variable. Uh, and depending on who you speak to and how the data is captured, you'll get different answers. But I think there's no doubt that the online momentum in Australia, the online retail sales momentum, is definitely growing, and there's no debate about that. And uh, what happens in Australia if we catch up to the rest of the world? What's going on in the rest of the world versus Australia? In the UK, you've seen online retail, as a percentage of total retail sales, uh, move from uh, about 3% or less than 3% five years ago to around 8% uh, in 2010. You've seen similar sort of trends in the US market where online retail is growing rapidly from, again, reasonably low percentage numbers to around 7%. And online retail in the US is influencing, in this year it's estimated, about a trillion dollars worth of in-store sales. So what, what percentage of sales in, retail sales in Australia do you think are now online? I think it's still relatively low for Australian retailers. Uh, I think it's probably only anywhere between 2 and 3%. And so do you think that Australia is going to catch up to the 7 or 8% uh, that we're now seeing in the UK and US? I think ultimately, yes. We have a, a slightly different issue in terms of density of population. Uh, our freight costs are, are, are proportionately higher for a lot of retailers, whereas in the UK and in the US market, you know, they can spread those freight costs ag ag across a more dense population base. But I think we'll get there. We're, we're early adopters of technology. We're early adopters of um, internet act uh, activities and things like that, and I think that's where we'll go. Because the retailers are saying at the moment they're doing it pretty tough. You know, uh, consumer spending is down in the stores. Do you think that that is, to some extent, caused by the shift towards online retailing? To some extent, yes, but I think there are greater factors at play. You know, there's no doubt that there's uh, the GFC impact. That economically, people are feeling different. Uh, you've got still Australian consumers are very highly leveraged. When you see the co interest rates go up, when you see, see the cost of living going up, that affects your bread and milk money and it affects people psychologically. When you balance that and then compare it to online, people are starting to research more about what they're going to buy, particularly when it comes to discretionary items. And what sort of Christmas did retailers in Australia have? Most of them had a pretty tough Christmas. Uh, a lot of them went on sale w well and truly early into the season and that left them nowhere to go in January. So uh, it, it becomes really difficult when you're having 50 or 70 per cent off pre-Christmas to then follow up in January with a big January sale and say, hi guys, we've got a new and different offer out there for the market or a big, bigger discount. It becomes pretty tough. You're seeing a lot of really, really heavy negative comp store sales out there. Not all retailers are in that situation. You're still seeing some good retailers get some fantastic results, but many retailers are really seeing some, some tough outcomes and many well-known retailers. And the other thing I'm hearing about is price rises in China. What's going on there? Well, I think this is the next kind of wave that's going to impact Australian retail because you're going to see you've got price deflation on the one hand in certain sectors of the market. You've got price inflation that is likely to happen going forward because costs are rising out of China, particularly in apparel impacted by the price of cotton, uh, the cost of labour uh, and a growing, uh, growing middle class in China which is sucking up its own demand out of those factories. Because when the GFC hit in 2008, you saw a lot of factories close in China and not all of that capacity is returned. So what are the retailers when they go to China and the buyers go over there to, 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 to uh, order their stuff and actually pick it up as well? What's actually occurring? Well, you're seeing some fairly interesting uh, discussions happening, uh, particularly for some of the smaller, relatively speaking, smaller retailers by, by world standards. Uh, it's not uncommon to see some factories basically saying to some wholesalers and retailers in this country when their products are ready to be ordered or ready to be delivered, saying, guys, we need to have a bit of, bit of a discussion about the price that you were going to pay and the price that you are now going to pay. Like, and what's the difference uh, that, you're hear, that you're hearing about? We're hearing stories between 20 and 30 per cent. It's not uncommon. And essentially what's being put to the, to the buyer, to the, to the retailer, is that unless you're prepared to pay that 20 or 30 per cent, we will look to source your product with another customer. Thanks very much for joining us, James. That's right. It's a pleasure. Thanks, Alan.